Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, inauguration program. Thank you, Professor Fatak, uh, for inviting me. It is a great pleasure and honor to be here to launch this historic event. I will give a brief overview of some of the activities that are happening in the mission and also at IIT Bombay. And I would like to explain how some of you can participate. Uh, in fact, it will be a dream if all of you can uh, participate in this mission. So the outline of the talk is as follows. I will give a brief overview of uh, CDEEP. Uh, the head of uh, CDEEP, Professor Tembe, is not around. So I thought I would give a couple of, uh, um, show a couple of slides and uh, summarize the activities of uh, CDEEP in a few minutes. But the main focus of my talk is on the National Mission on Education through ICT. I would like to talk about the projects undertaken at IIT Bombay through this mission. I want to spend some time, depending on uh, the time available, importance of the open source software for our country. And then um, I would like to include this invitation for proposals as a part of this outline, just to emphasize that we are here to also to tell you about the mission and to solicit your proposals for the mission. Um, so these are the objectives to include all of this. The reason why I want to talk about the projects is to tell you what kind of projects are funded by the mission. And uh, the open source software is extremely important. I want to spend some time on that. So here is a brief summary of CDEEP, Center for Distance Engineering Education Program. Through CDEEP, we transmitted 25 to 35 courses every semester during the last four semesters. We covered, we transmitted a total of more than 100 courses in the last two years, amounting to about 5,000 hours of lectures. More importantly, these were transmitted completely free of cost. These were made available through satellite EduSat, the same thing that is used just now, and also through webcast so that those who do not have access to EduSat can also access these courses. This is a, a, a view graph showing the statistics. It has taken some time for us to uh, gain experience. And in the last two years, we transmitted. The last semester is not shown here. This is also about 25 courses. Okay. A course means a subject in the university lingo. It's uh, a course consists of 40 lectures. It ends at the end of the semester with a final exam. These uh, courses were made available through video on demand to our students, to the students at IIT Bombay. And you can see the number of hits versus the month. You can see in November of last year, 2008, 16,000 hits. This was during the exam time. There were 35 courses transmitted. And then we transmitted 25 courses in the next semester. And you can see in the month of April, 12,000 hits. Now these correspond to the months in which the exam took place. So there were, you now people are looking at these uh, courses, recorded courses during the exam time or just before the exam time uh, repeatedly. And we have similar statistics for November 2009 as well. I have not included it here. We would like to make these courses available through video on demand to the outside people. And we are exploring the possibilities of making these courses available for about 200 rupees per course through DVDs. By the way, the funding for the entire operation has come through the National Mission on Education through ICT. And we are extremely thankful for that. So let me just spend some time on the National Mission on Education through ICT. It is launched by the Ministry of Human Resources Development, Government of India. and. Um, the objective is to raise the levels of education in India. 
the outlay for this is rupees 4600 crore out of which 40 percent is reserved for content generation. What is meant by content generation I will explain in the next couple of slides. 60 percent of the money is reserved for bandwidth to establish the infrastructure, the bandwidth, hardware and so on. The idea is to provide good bandwidth to every one of the colleges around including private colleges, government colleges, university departments, universities and so on. This is uh, the largest and most ambitious plan and it is likely to continue in the next plan period as well. As you all know that we have another two years and four months in the current plan period and then um, we are doing well in this uh, uh, mission as of now and it is expected to gather further momentum and we hope that it will continue in the next plan period that is another five years after 2012. These are the 18 line items that I mentioned earlier. Uh, NPTEL, PG classes, UG classes, digitization, ebooks, quality assurance, pedagogical methods, language converter and translation toolkit, virtual labs, and then certification, testing modules, vir virtual technological university. By the way, the ones in blue are the ones uh, IIT Bombay is involved in. Low cost access devices, if things go according to the plan, within about a year or so, we should be able to see $20 access devices, which are almost like laptops that will give connectivity to most of our children, including the poor children and also those in rural areas. Talk to a teacher to provide a substitute for coaching for the economically poor students. So uh, this is the one that has funded CDEEP's activities. This is the one that is also funding Professor Fortech's uh, course, namely the course, the 1000 teacher training program. Uh, read this, talk to a teacher to provide a substitute for coaching for the economically poor students. So this is the way it appears in the mission document. So we cannot be more explicit than this. And then robotics, and this is also another crucial uh, thing. I want to spend a few minutes on this. Adaptation and deployment of open source simulation packages equivalent to MATLAB, ORCAD, etc. Once again, this is the way it appears in the mission document. ERP system, and then uh, teacher training, uh, conversion dubbing, and then vocational educational modules. So these are the 18 line items on which the mission uh, will fund project proposals at the college level from everyone in the country, including those who come from private engineering colleges. Now, for that matter, sorry, I mentioned engineering colleges. It is not restricted to engineering alone. It is in, uh, liberal arts, sciences, uh, law, medicine, agriculture, everything is included. As a matter of fact, two weeks ago, um, someone from Trinalveli made a presentation on criminology and uh, the standing committee was extremely happy to see such a proposal and recommended a pilot. Necessary conditions for a project to be funded by this mission are given here. It should be related to education for research, other sources are available. It should be inter-institutional. Any material developed through this mission has to be delivered as open source. This is extremely important. Inter-institutional says that uh, for joint projects, uh, the funding chances are higher. It should belong to one of the 18 line items mentioned earlier. No funding will be provided for infrastructure development. For example, you cannot say that I want to put up a building, please give me money. I want to buy 100 PCs give me money. It will always be in the form of clear deliverables. I want, to deliver, I want to create so many courses. I want to train so many teachers. I want to train so many government officials. I want to train number of students, so on and so forth. Uh, at this point, I would also like to mention that um, uh, the proposal through this, I am not sure whether I have uh, it in the next slide. Let me see it. If so, uh, I have it here. 
so the administration of the mission is given here. The mission director is Mr. N. K. Sinha, Joint Secretary Distance Learning Training. We must be the first country to have such a high level position for distance education. He is a great administrator. In fact, I am extremely pleased to be working on this mission. The administra administrative structure is as follows. There is a project approval board which is chaired by the secretary of MHRD. The steering committee, uh, sorry, I'm, uh, this is actually should be standing committee. The standing, there is a standing committee that meets uh, once in two weeks, first Saturday and third Saturday of every month at 11 o'clock in Delhi. And um, it is chaired by the mission director, Mr. N. K. Sinha. Uh, the recommendation of the projects is done here and the approval is done here. I am a member of this standing committee. And of course, there are many review committees. Uh, most of the transactions are done through internet, project submission, review, etc. happen online. The important website is sakshat.ac.in. That's where all the uh, submission takes place. Uh, when we evaluate a proposal, the person who has written the proposal has to come to Delhi and make a presentation to the standing committee. And depending on the assessment and the reviews received, the standing committee could recommend a pilot to see whether the person can actually deliver whether the things proposed in the proposal are reasonable, realistic, doable in a reasonable amount of time. And if the pilot phase is successful, then the main project is approved. So all projects will go through the pilot phase and we don't reject any proposal. If uh, at the most we will say that this proposal has to be rewritten, you have asked for infrastructure, your deliverables are not clearly defined, please do all of this and come back and make a presentation. The TADA for the visit is given by the ministry. So as you can see, the objective of this proposal uh, of this mission is to reach out to as many colleges as possible and also to uh, raise the levels of education in the country. So with this, okay, sorry, I have uh, some of those things are summarized here. The procedure to get uh, the funding which I already mentioned, submit the project and also get a pilot for six months. It is reviewed pilot project is recommended and the uh, PI may be asked to participate in one of the already approved missions. For example, IIT Bombay will be very keen if the participating colleges, those of you who are listening to me now, can participate directly in some of our mission funded projects. In the worst case, will be you will be asked to rewrite the proposal. After a successful completion of the pilot project, the project is approved. So I am glad anyway to repeat this because this is an important summary of how this mission is administered. So I told you that I'll give you a list of the projects that happen at IIT Bombay so as to give a flavor of this mission. Um, the first one is empowerment of students and teachers through synchronous education. Recall the line item which said that um, substitute for coaching for economically poor students. So this comes under that line item. This supports uh, CDEEP. Uh, empowerment of teachers is what uh, Professor Fatek is going to, uh, for, uh, this course, Thousand Teacher Training Program comes, on, comes under empowerment of teachers uh, uh, project. I will not say much about it because the next 11 days will be spent on going through this and Professor Fatak also has uh, um, a lot of things to say. I also do not want to steal the thunder from him. So I am going to skip this. I am going to spend some time on these open source software effort. So we are at IIT Bombay working on Python, Blender, LaTeX and LaTeX for Indian languages and also Scilab, uh, Robotics, Virtual Labs, NPTEL. NPTEL is of course well known so I will skip this also. 
I want to spend some time on IIT Bombay's open source software efforts. This is extremely important given that about 900 college teachers who are going to teach computer programming will be listening to me. And if each one is going to influence 100 students, so we can see that we'll be able to reach out to one lakh, 100,000 students in no time. So let me spend some time on this. Why should I even worry about open source software? The, why should the academia worry about it? Even though the commercial software may be expensive, the students have this software, access to these softwares uh, at a low cost and sometimes even free of cost. The problem is once they go to industry, they find that some of these software, commercial software packages are not available in the industrial setting. Uh, just to give an example, uh, in this very classroom, I was teaching a course embedded systems uh, about six months ago. And there were about 25 students, mostly MTech and PhD students in uh, computer science. I asked the students, how many of them had used Scilab? And uh, only one of them raised his hand. Scilab, as you all know, is a open source software package with uh, extraordinary capabilities. So I asked him, in fact, I scolded him, what made you use Scilab when nobody else has used? So he told me that he was working for a small embedded systems company that was making microcontrollers, embedded systems for high tech applications like uh, washing machines, air conditioners, ovens, refrigerators, mobile phones and so on and so forth. And uh, it was a small company, high value added, highly profitable, started, started by technocrats entrepreneurs, but unfortunately the turnover was very small and a copy of the equivalent commercial software would cost that company 2.5 crore, which is of the order of $600,000. So that company told him that software is not available and this fellow had two options. One is not to use any software or to use Scilab, which is the open source software. He decided to use the open source software Scilab he found it to be extremely good. Now, if what happens if somebody uses some software illegally? So we have a uh, small story here. I'll just briefly mention this. This is also extremely important because I want you to be aware of this. I want you to tell this to your students when you go back to your colleges. So it is that uh, during a raid, one of a, an Italian company was found uh, in in one machine in an Italian company, they found an illegal copy of one famous software company, a commodity software company's product. And um, so the moment it was caught, they had to pay back at penal rates. Even though it was found on only one machine, this com they counted the total number of installations, PC installations in that location and all over the world and counted by per cost copy and finally, this company ended up paying $20 million as damages. So in our case, in our embedded systems company example, if this company uses it illegally, it could even result in, supposing they have 10 PCs in that location, 10 into 2.5, so 25 crore may have to be paid as damages. And otherwise, if they don't pay the, the CEO, CIO, CTO, and so on, may have to go to jail, company will close down, and so on. So what happens is reliance on commercial software packages that are extremely expensive. Some of these are 100 times expensive or 1,000 times expensive. Reliance on them makes our um, SME, small and medium enterprises, at a great disadvantage. So there is no alternative to open source software at all if we want to advance our country. So I want to spend a few minutes on spoken tutorials. Um, the problem with open source software is the documentation is very poor. Uh, what I will do is uh, because of lack of time, not sure I probably will run out of time otherwise. I will talk about this uh, open source software 
with a demo and so on, uh, if I get an opportunity later on in this course, uh, I, let me just say that uh, Swakar tutorial is nothing but uh, a procedure to capture an activity that happens on the screen. So you can conduct a tutorial and um, you can give your commentary and um, you can give the uh, commentary and uh, that commentary can be in any language of your choice. Uh, one needs just a PC, headphone uh, with audio input which will cost 100 to 200 rupees and the recording can be played back uh, on a PC as a movie. I will give a brief uh, uh, illustration of this. Okay, so here I have. Hello friends, on behalf of C Team IIT Bombay, I welcome you to this audience. All you need is a 400 megahertz. So in this, um, the uh, speaker talks about a product called Camp Studio that can be used to record what happens in uh, on the screen. She has captured a screen of this size. Okay. I told you that it can be in any language. Uh, in fact, what we did was after creating this spoken tutorial, which is uh, which runs for about 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, she explains how to use this Cam Studio, using which you can create spoken tutorials on Windows. Okay. Then we announced a dubbing competition and got it dubbed. In a matter of three to four days, we dubbed this into several languages. For example, let me just show this. So, Hindi. The important thing to notice is the video is still in English. Okay? Only the spoken part is in Begin every one of this is a link because of shortage of time. I will not go to that. Let me show you Marathi. You will see that the Marathi voice is probably the best because she also happens to be a dubbing artist. So there is no need for the dubbing to be. So let me just go ahead. Okay. So I was just telling that um, the dubbed one can even be better than the original okay? because you suppress the audio and redo the entire audio. So here is one on Tamil. Okay, so uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it creates small files. It is inexpensive to create, inexpensive to access, and the running commentary, as I mentioned, can be in any language. All children, poor, rural, etc., can participate. The 80 to 90 percent of the public who are now left out of, left out can also start contributing to the IT movement. The tragedy of the IT revolution in India is that it has completely bypassed people who don't know English, so which is about 90 percent of the public. So I strongly believe that through this technology, we can bring them also into fold and they can also start contributing. The original tutorial can be in Marathi, in Hindi, Bengali, Bhojpuri and so on that can be dubbed into other languages later on. Using English video with local languages, I believe that it will greatly improve the employment opportunities for our children. So other, um, in about five minutes, I'll just give a brief summary of the thrust areas, uh, open source uh, software packages. We are also going to take this up in uh, through spoken tutorials. Scilab I had already mentioned. By the way, the French spe space research, CNES, which is the equivalent of our ISRO, uses Scilab exclusively. In one of the talks uh, in which I, the, a talk that I chaired in July this year, a French, uh, uh, an official of this agency 
gave a talk, he went on talking about usage of Scilab uh, in their research work and I asked him, is there any application for which they do not use Scilab? And his answer was no, they use Scilab for everything. By the way, they launch Ariane satellites, Ariane rockets, they launch some of our uh, satellites in the early part of ISRO. Uh, they probably do it even now. So, if they can use Scilab, we can also do this. LaTeX is another uh, activity we are uh, uh, undertaking. We have also created um, a DVD uh, which we will be glad to make available to you. Uh, through this we have created lots of spoken tutorials and we have already assigned the task of dubbing all of this into Hindi and Marathi and Malayalam is in pipeline. We hope to translate, dub all of these spoken tutorials all in all our Indian languages. And we want to extend this activity for several other open source initiatives as well. For example, Linux it can be done, open source, open office it can be done, uh, Python um, which is uh, an important activity at IIT Bombay, we would extend it to uh, Python as well. And then we are in the process of building a social networking site for spoken tutorials. And so this is some of the procedures, I will skip these. In fact, we have some couple of designs. One of our BTEC students has designed this, we hope to go on stream soon. Okay, I would like to conclude this talk with uh, open source hardware. You can see a picture of this. I also brought one of this here. So it is actually, it is a very small one, I just lifted it. What does it do? Okay, this system can be used to control the temperature of a plant by heating with a current, by cooling with a fan. You can see that there is a there is a fan here, there is a heater here, it has an Atmega 16 microcontroller. The, the objective of this system is to control a plant. The plant is a small blade that is here. The temperature of this blade is sensed through uh, AD590 which is a temperature sensor and this microcontroller has analog inputs and outputs and uh, it has a USB um, interface and also a serial interface and it has power supply, you can see it here. You can see the power supply. So, this is a low cost device with a time constant of the order of 40 seconds. So, we have, uh, it can be used in lots of different courses and the important thing is the it is available for only 2400 rupees and the design is available as open source with bill of material. So, in case your college decides to uh, download and build it yourself, it will cost only 1000 rupees, only 20 dollars. Uh, for a limited time, we can make this unit available, make this uh, unit available to you free of cost if you can come up with a project idea on how you will use it. Once again, all the activities that I mentioned here are funded by the National Mission on Education through ICT. One of the reasons for talking about this is to give you a flavor of the projects that are funded by the mission, to invite you to write proposals to the mission and also that you will participate directly with IIT Bombay's faculty members. We welcome uh, participation from all of you. Uh, by the way, this is part of a bigger initiative called Virtual Labs, the unit that I showed. Uh, people can try it remotely and if they are happy with its use, they can acquire sufficient, num sufficient numbers of it for hands-on training. They can build a whole lab using this instrument. We have carried out a large number of experiments using this device. And we are in the process of uh, creating about a 250 page manual that will go with this. Uh, we are, uh, we have created a Moodle site with a discussion forum where the people who are using this can interact with us and they can also come up with their own experiments. So, uh, with this I come to the end of my brief presentation. The open source efforts are not only idealistic, but make a lot of economic and commercial sense as well. It has a potential to empower all Indian children to collaborate 
and make us a developed nation. Some of you may, you may think that, you know, this is, you know, um, an overstatement that, you know, just by software, can we do this? The point is that software is going to drive the future. And the problem, the tragedy, as I mentioned, is that we have left out the 90% of our public. We definitely know that if we don't take them along, we will never be a developed nation. So you may consider this a, as a wishful thinking. That's okay. If you bring them all in, then everybody will have access to this powerful technology, IT. So we are going to use it everywhere to book a ticket, to check the weather, to use mobile, to talk to somebody, all kinds of things you cannot do without IT in the future. I strongly believe that if we empower all our children to use IT, we will definitely become a developed nation. And um, of course, the National Mission on Education through ICT is based on the open source principle. And uh, I'm glad to know that this, uh, this entire course, 1000 Teacher Training Program, uh, will be made available as open source. Uh, you will be able to download it. You will be able to modify it. You will be able to add your own content to that. You will be able to dub it. Somebody, in fact, wrote to me last night at 11.45 from Kerala. They would want to replace the C with Python. I said, we'll be delighted. Please dub it. Please bring in Python and so on. We'll be more than happy to include you as our partners. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude my talk. And I'm really delighted, as I mentioned earlier, that you're all um, are here. Um, as Professor Fatak mentioned, there are going to be differences in the way uh, we communicate through EduSat. There could be small delays. I request you to be patient. And um, you may also want, there are also some rules that you may want to follow. It will take some time for you to figure out. But hopefully, you will do that. One of the things I would want to point out, because this is something I noticed during the trial period, uh, when uh, Professor uh, Fatag ran uh, trials here. Um, it's a good idea for all the remote centers to keep your mic muted, except when you talk. If you keep your mic also on, and if it is not properly positioned, then our transmission will pick up your echo signal. In fact, you will see a big echo. And that will affect not only you, but all the centers in the network. So just like we say that, please turn off your mobile before talks are given, I request you to turn off your microphones, except when you talk. When you talk, please turn it on and talk. And so that will minimize the echo. So let me um, uh, conclude this uh, talk. Uh, this is my email address. I would welcome your comments on the talk that I presented. If you have questions on the mission, also I'll be glad to answer them. So um, uh, best wishes to all of you. Thank you.